Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to look into how do we merge uh, different data frames. So let's just say we have this data frame that contains uh, the registration number of different students and their names. And we have this another data frame that contains the registration numbers. Some registration number might match with the names table, some might not. And it also contains the marks of uh, those students. So what we need to do is we need to prepare a report sheet. And for that, we need to combine these two data sets. So we want these 43 marks to be written in front of AdWords. And then we, we want the 65 marks to be written in front of, uh, let's just say, Josh and so on and so forth. So there are different ways of merging uh, data frames in R. We have different types of joints. Uh, so I would just uh, uh, first uh, mention those joints and then we would look into these joints one by one. We have left joint, right joint, inner joint, full joint, semi-joint and anti-joint. So let's start with the left joint. I would just explain the left joint and then we would move to R uh, to further work with that. So what left join does is it retains all the observations from the left table, which is the names table, and add the matching rows from the right hand table, which in this case is the marks table. So if we look at the resultant data frame, we see that we had these four uh, individuals, four students in the names data frame. So we retain all the four uh, individuals from the right, uh, from the left table. So retains all the observation from the left table and it matches the relevant observation from the right hand table. So we, we get the marks and where there were no marks uh, in the right hand table, we get a missing value. What about this ID 105? This is present in the marks table, but not in the names table. So it would be left out, right? So we would just focus on the left, left table. So let's uh, uh, apply these, this, uh, this knowledge in, in R. So we would going to use the dplyr and the tidyverse or the tidyverse package. So dplyr is already the part of tidyverse package. So either you load the dplyr or you load the tidyverse package. That's one in the same thing. Uh, I have these data frames. So we have registration number names and these are exactly the same registration and numbers and the names as I have shown you uh, in the previous slide. And then we have this another data frame that is the marks data frame. So let's uh, press over here and press control enter but, and that would load uh, these data frames, right? So we have the names data frame and then we have the marks data frame. And what we need to do is we need to left join. Uh, so the syntax is we write the left joint. Uh, this is the function. Then we specify the, the, the data frame uh, that we want to join, right? So these would be two data frames because we are going to join two data frames. <clears throat> we are going to merge two data frames. So the names and the marks data frame. So this one becomes the uh, left data frame and this one becomes the right data frames. And we, as we remember from the left joint, we know that it would keep all the rows or all the observations from the left table, that is the names table. So it would retain all these four observations. And by parameter means that how do we want to merge this data? So there should be an, a unique identifier that can be used to merge these two tables. So we know that within the names table, we have this registration number and also within the marks table, we have this registration number. So we can use this registration number to, to merge these two, uh, these two data frames. Remember to use inverted commas uh, for the column name in the by parameter. So let's press control enter and we have this data frame over here. This is exactly the same data frame as we saw in our previous slide. So let's move to right joint. So in right joint, it would retain all the observations from the right table. So it is exactly opposite of left joint. In left joint, we retain all the values from the left table, but in right joint, it would retain all the values from the right table 
and add matching rows from the left table. So if we look at the resultant uh, data frame, we saw that we had three uh, individuals in the right hand table, 102, 103 and 104. And we have their marks and we have their relevant names from the names uh, data table. So although there was a 1001 and 1004 in the names table, uh, but they are left out because in the right joint, it would take, uh, it would retain only the observations that are there in the right hand table. Uh, what about this 105? Although it was there in marks uh, table, but not in the names table. So it would have an any value in the names column. So let's apply this knowledge in R. So the function that we use is a right underscore joint. Uh, and the parameters are exactly the same. Uh, the first table, the second table, uh, the first data frame, the second data frame, and then uh, the ID using which it would be merged. So the resultant uh, data frame would be saved as uh, right, uh, the data frame by the name of right. So let's press enter. We have this data frame over here. We have three observations. We can see that these are the uh, observations that were there in the marks table data frame and we do not have uh, any name for uh, 1005 because there was no name for 1005 in the names table. So let's move to our third type which is inner join. So what inner join does is it retains the observations that matches in both the table. So it would look in this uh, names table uh, using whatever uh, matching key that we are using. So we can see that in the marks and the names table, we just have two observations that would match. And that is 1002 and 1003. So the rest of all the observations would be dropped and the resultant vector, as we can see in the inner joint, uh, the resultant data frame contains only two observations. So let's apply this knowledge in R. We use the inner underscore joint function, the same parameters and save it in the inner data frame we get uh, just the two observations. The observations that were there in both the data frame. Uh, next is full joint and as the name would suggest, it would retain all the observations from both the table. So it would take this names table and uh, it would combine whatever names and ma marks table have in common, right? So which is Edwards and Josh. Uh, and then we have uh, this 1005, which is present in the marks, but not in the names table. So it would have an missing value in the names column. And then we have 1001 and 1004 that are present in the names table, but not in the marks table. So they would have missing values in the marks. So full joint would combine all the observations. Uh, so we use the full joint function and the parameters remains the same. So this resultant uh, a data frame would contain uh, all the observations as we discussed on in our previous slide. So let's move on to semi joint. And what semi joint would do is it, uh, it actually would not perform any joint, right? So it is a joint, but uh, it would not merge the data frame. So what, what that means is that it would just retain the observations from the table one if it had the matching values in table two. So let's just say this, uh, we know that 102 and 103 uh, do have a matching value in table two. But th what the result of semi joint would be that it would not give us, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the merge, it would just retain these values from the first table and drop all the rest of the value. So it would not actually perform some certain merge. And let's also uh, look into the uh, uh, another type, which is anti-joint. And uh, it is opposite of uh, semi-joint. And what it does is it just retains the observation from table one if it does not have matching values in table two. So it's opposite of, so in, in, in semi-joint, we retained 102 and 103 because they uh, were common in both the tables. Uh, but in anti-joint, what it would do is it would take names table, uh, match, uh, and remove all those observations that, uh, that have a match with the marks table and just retain the ones that do not have any match, which is 101 and 104. 
So let's perform this idea on R. Uh, so we have this semi joint and anti joint. And let's look into semi joint. We just get Edwards and Josh, which is 102 and 103. And in anti joint, we get 101 and 104. So that was uh, this tidyverse package. We would come back to this tidyverse package, but let me show you another package, which is uh, which is not actually package, but it is a function from the base R. That is the by base R we mean uh, the functions that come pre-installed when you install R. So I would just want to give you an idea of this, but obviously we would move. Uh, we would keep moving with the tidyverse package because that is more easier to use and we would look into other um, other ways of doing merge uh, when we have different variable names or when we have matching using multiple variables using the tidyverse package. So just to give you an idea of the merge function. Uh, so the merge function works is that uh, somewhat similar to the join function uh, coming from the tidyverse is uh, all the parameters are somewhat same as we had over here, right? So we we write the, uh, the two data frames, then we specify how do we want to merge. And the last that the last parameter is different from that of the joint. So if we want to perform the left joint, uh, what we would do is we would say all dot x, this is the parameter should be equal to true. And what it means is that retain all values from the x table. So this is the x. So left uh, means x and uh, right means marks. Uh, sorry, right means y. Uh, so this becomes this first data frame becomes x and the second data frame becomes y. So it is saying that retain all the values uh, from the names and which is exactly what we did in the left joint. So I would just perform this and quickly show you the uh, the uh, the M left. This is exactly equal to the left table, right? Then we have M right. Uh, so we merge uh, and the rest of the parameter would remain same, except we would say that retain all the values from the Y data frame, which is the max data frame. So this becomes basically the right joint. Just to give you an idea, uh, we have these uh, these uh, values, uh, which is equal to uh, uh, that of the right joint. We can also do inner joint where we do not have to specify the parameter. So it would only retain the values that matches in both the data frame. Uh, that would be two values. And we can also do, do full uh, joint uh, where we would have to use all equal to two, true and that would mean that retain all the values. So let's move forward and look into some of the cases that you might encounter when you're working with uh, with merging the data. So before that, let me drop uh, clear my environment and let me load a fresh copy of my names and the marks data frame. And one thing that I have changed is that instead of having a registration number, uh, this reg in my marks data frame, I have this column name as ID. So the data is exactly the same, but I have changed the name of the column. So in marks, uh, in the marks table, let me close all these windows. So in the marks table, uh, we have this ID column, which is equal to the registration number or reg column in the names table. So now if we just uh, use this parameter by is equal to rag. So it would give us an error uh, that uh, there is no rag in the marks uh, data frame. So what we need to do is when let's say we just do left joint, I mean, the idea would be similar, uh, exactly the same if we do other types of joint, but I would just demonstrate left joint. So we write our uh, first data frame, the second data frame, and the, the magic happens in this by parameter. So what we do is we, we write C, which stands for uh, combine or concatenation, and we specify the column name in the first uh, data frame, which is reg, because we have a reg in names data frame, is equal to the ID column in the uh, in the second data frame, which is the marks data frame. So what we are saying is that combined by reg or ID, but uh, you need to know that reg 
uh, in the names data frame is equal to mark uh, id in the marks data frame so if we do that it would do the exact same joint as we did before next we might have multiple variables to uh, to 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 merge uh, our data uh, so let me first clear the environment and uh, now in this case i have this uh, this data frame where I contain, it contains the name of the students, uh, sorry, the name of the students, their registration number and uh, their program. So we might have same registration number in different programs. So for example, and Edward contains the same registration number as of Josh, but Edward is from BBA program and Josh is from the MBA program. So, uh, so, when we merge the data, we need to know that we also have this same, uh, these, this repetitive ID in our second data frame, which is marks. So we want to merge uh, AdWords uh, with 43 because AdWords is in BBA and we want to merge based on two variables, that is program and uh, ID. And Josh would have 65 marks. So let me load this data and Again, the magic would happen in the by parameter, the rest would remain the same. And again, we are just going to demonstrate it using the left joint, but the idea remains same if you perform the other types of joints. So we use concatenation, that is C. So registration number uh, is equal to ID. So this reg column in the names data frame is the same as the ID column in the marks data frame. <laughs> comma, now we are going to give the second variable uh, where we say that we need to merge based on program also. Uh, so program is equal to uh, program in, so so the, the wording are different. So this prog is equal to the program in the marks data frame. So it would basically merge on two different uh, uh, variables. So if I perform that, uh, you can see that it have merged uh, the same marks, right? The correct marks. Now, if that uh, that is somewhat difficult to uh, to handle, let me just give the exactly same uh, column names in both of these uh, data frames. Now, if I perform this merge based on two different uh, different parameters, I do not have to use these equal signs, and I just have to make it easy for you. Uh, to digest this. So this would be uh, prog, right? So this is how it would be done, right? You see the result is exactly the same because we had the same name uh, in both, uh, column name in both the data frames. So we, we could simply have written it like this. But if we have different columns, then the previous example that we did uh, would be the one uh, to work with. So I hope that was useful. We would have, uh, so this merge topic is quite uh, diverse, quite lengthy. We would have multiple videos on this topic. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, do subscribe the channel and do hit the bell icon.